our next panelist, Ron Bellini, the one and only. Hi, uh, thank you for having me, first and foremost. Uh, my background, martial arts. And I think it was about 1980, uh, was it about like 82, I met uh, Guru Dan in Asanto, well, actually 80. Uh, I started to get ranked with him in the, in, uh, in the mid 80s. And um, I was from Chicago, he used to travel around. I was a kid, I, uh, I was a problem child. I, I have a family member here right now who can attest to it. Um, I, I had gotten shot in a drive-by, and I was just pissed at the world after that. And I think that knowing uh, Guru Dan and Asanto gave me a different path than the streets and what was being offered in Chicago then. So I got to the point where I became a, a, a deputy sheriff in, in Cook County, which is in, in the Chicago area. I was a deputy sheriff. And... I liked it, but I wasn't, I knew I didn't want this for life. You know, I spent about five years doing that, and he, in Asanto, gave me an offer, do you want to move to California? So I came to California without film in mind. I just wanted to be the next Dan in Asanto, you know? I loved everything about the man. And uh, I got offered a job, I, I, a, a, a stunt coordinator was by the school and seen that I wasn't taking people's heads off. I had good control. And they had a new TV series coming out called Power Rangers. And he asked me if I wanted to be in it. And I'm like, what's a Power Ranger? And I didn't know. And it was a brand new show at that time. So I did that for a while. And that got me into stunt work. And um, fast forward, um, I married my wife, who's in the audience, uh, Diana Lee in Asanto. And, yeah. So... Diana was a, a, an actress, first and foremost. Uh, roles back then for, for uh, mixed nationalities, weren't, they didn't know how to cast you. So what happened was I got her to do this one small movie with me called Barbed Wire. I don't know if you guys know that, a Pam Anderson, Anderson film. And we actually fight Tamora Morrison, who's Boba Fett now. And he, he kills both of us. And uh, that got her running. And now Diana's doing Filipino, well, she's done a lot of Filipino martial arts in Mandalorian and Ahsoka. And uh, so she's, she's hitting it out of the park. But my martial art career consists of, first and foremost, Guru Dan and Asanto, Punguru Edgar Saluti. I've trained with a host of other Filipino martial artists like Christopher Ricketts, Angel Cabales. I mean, mm. the list goes on and on and on. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm not going to name them all. But I'm hooked. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I've gotten into big trouble. For saying this, I'm going to say it again. Filipino martial arts is so applicable that it's, it's, it's been Chinese martial arts in movies. It's been Japanese martial arts in movies. It's, it, you know, like we are you know, like the stepchild, in a way, of martial arts. We're so applicable. We're so uh, refined. We can showcase an art really well. But just we've been underappreciated, and I'm, I'm really happy now that it's starting to become known. So this is our now, Hold on. Who would you say was the most skilled out of all the best actors that you Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> That's. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put it to you this way: there are some actors who. You could tell it was, and I'm not talking about the two you see. I've, I've done many, many movies. And you could see for some of them, like I have, I've had one actor saying, why, why aren't I doing rom-coms? You know, because they just weren't up for how much work it was really going to be. Uh, uh, the two that you showed there, Mila, when we first got Mila, she had done Resident Evil 1. And she was determined. She had gotten criticized. If, if you watch Resident Evil 1, and, and I'm not saying this, I'm, I'm not talking out of school. Uh, she, she has said this publicly. They didn't trust her. So if you watch it, it was one hit cut, another angle, another hit cut, another kick, you know, like just cut, 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 cut. She was dis determined to be able to just play out the fight in one take if possible. So she put the time and effort in. I had her, what was it, like six months, I think, in a gym, like four to five days mm. a week for about four hours a day. Mm. By the time I was done, she looked like she could just go. You know, when we first got there, it was kind of this. And by the time we left, she was on. Mm. And, and she put that hard work in. So I really applaud her for it. Uh, Aaron Eckhart, his work ethic 
is insane. He, like, I brought in some of my students on certain days because he had, he had to fight multiple people through this thing. So I would get like three, four guys and we would just have this thing. Obviously it was scripted and choreographed. But a couple guys, I'm like, just warm up with Aaron. And they're like, okay. And all of a sudden he's like, Rrr! and they're like, oh my God. You know, they thought they were fighting for their life. So his work ethic is off the charts. Um, talent wise, I, God, I, uh, Diana, should I do this? <laughs> my wife. Ta- talent wise, th- there's one actor that I've worked with on The Last Ship. His talent is off the charts good. His name's Bren Foster. And if you've never looked him up, look him up. His kicks are by far the best. His work ethic is off the charts. His hands are good. He's game for it. And everything we did, he's like, could we pressure test it? So we sparred almost everything. He wanted to see if it was just Hollywood or if it was like workable, or even, even if he couldn't, if, if, he wanted to see if it had a half a chance of working. Otherwise we'd divorce it and try to just put something in. So God, I hate that question. I'm sorry because it gets me into trouble. But you're only saying good things about people. 